Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Reminder, time to enroll for fall semester. You guys please don't wait till Monday to do this. And tonight, introduction to plant-based nutrition at 9 p.m. and Tuesday, September 10th, uh, Chef Dell will be doing Tofu 101 in his conversations with Chef Dell. So those are some things that are coming up. Um, today, I have a couple of uh, articles I want to talk to you about concerning supplementation. Uh, we're going to talk about resveratrol, which is a polyphenol found in grapes and red wine uh, to start with. It's been represented as having um, incredible effects on cardiovascular health and it can reverse aging. I mean, the list of things that resveratrol is rumored to do goes on and on. Um, supplementation with it has become a big business, you know, and I always find it interesting that the natural health community can criticize traditional health professionals for latching on to things that make money and hanging on to them for dear life when my community, I'm a naturopath, sort of, kind of, not really by the way I practice, but anyway, um, natural health community is guilty of doing exactly the same thing. Now you might remember if you've been listening to my messages and you have access to the Health Brief on Briefs Online Library, I posted a couple of years ago, there's a big scandal involving fabricated data on the benefits of resveratrol. And if you go to the library, um, the article you want to look at is Red Wine Fraud, uh, which discusses the whole uh, episode that happened. But you know, it didn't make a dent in sales. Resveratrol is still big business. but. The evidence continues to mount that it is not as beneficial as previously thought, which seems to always be the case with supplements. Now, a new study shows that older men taking resveratrol supplements showed that they interfere, the supplements actually interfered with the positive effects of cardiovascular um, uh, health, of, of exercise on cardiovascular health. And I think this is the the thing that I'm seeing more and more in the, in the scientific um, journals these days is that the supplements aren't just useless. They're, it's better if you don't take them. They do more harm than good. So in this case, 27 healthy and physically active men in their mid-60s were followed for eight weeks. They all performed high-intensity exercise, while half of them took 250 milligrams a day of resveratrol. The other half took a placebo. The study was double-blinded. The researchers reported that exercise improved cardiovascular health. This is not a surprise. We know that that's the effect of exercise. And the effects included better blood pressure, cholesterol, maximum oxygen uptake, overall lipid profile. But the subjects taking resveratrol did not do as well as the placebo group. The placebo group had a 45% higher increase in maximal oxygen uptake than the resveratrol group. Prostacycline levels were lower in the resveratrol group. Prostacycline is a vasodilator, keeps the arteries open so that blood flows freely. Taking resveratrol completely obliterated the positive effects of exercise on LDL, total cholesterol, HDL ratio, I, that's a useless marker, but they always include that, uh, and triglycerides. Atherosclerosis markers did not improve in the resveratrol group either. The researchers concluded, quote, the findings indicate that whereas exercise training effectively improves several cardiovascular health parameters in aged men, concomitant resveratrol supplementation blunts most of those effects. Now let me translate that for you. Resveratrol, useless and harmful. Don't take it, all right? That's not the only useless and harmful supplement out there. Vitamin T, D is at the top of the list also. It's another one that has become an industry while physicians and healthcare professionals have attributed low vitamin D levels. Very subjective term, by the way. Lots of articles about this topic in the Health Brace Online Library. But um, healthcare practitioners have equated lower vitamin D levels with just about every disease condition people suffer with from, uh, from you know, cancer to heart disease, diabetes, etc. Um, and proposed that if we would just give everybody vitamin D, all their problems would be solved. The only problem is it doesn't work. Now, it is true that people with certain conditions do tend to have lower vitamin D levels, but we just don't have any proof that there's a cause and effect relationship or that taking supplements helps. Now, a new study looked at the effects of large doses of vitamin D on older people with hypertension. 159 patients, average age 77, were randomized to get 100,000 international units of vitamin D or placebo every month for, uh, every three months for a year. No differences in blood pressure, arterial stiffness, endothelial function, cholesterol levels, glucose level, or insulin resistance during the study period. Now, this isn't surprising. Let's think about how people develop cardiovascular disease. Poor diet, 
from including fat and cholesterol, leading to plaques and arterial stiffness and uh, narrowing of the blood vessels and decreased nitric oxide production. And I could go on through the list. Some of you've heard Dr. Esselstyn's lecture on the topic. So think about it. How in the heck could vitamin D pills or any other pills for that matter have an impact on this? The only thing that has an impact on this whole problem is changing the diet. And, and furthermore, vitamin D has a lot of wonderful um, qualities, by the way, and, and very necessary for function. We're designed to produce it in response to sunlight. But even if going out in the sun and producing vitamin D were to be the, the solution for cardiovascular disease, it's not, by the way, but, but even if it were, the, the um, way that this is approached in the, in the health community these days is that taking vitamin D and pills would be the same as going out in the sun, and it absolutely isn't. We simply cannot replicate with pills what we get from making the right diet and lifestyle choices. So, Another failed study. Now this one didn't find any adverse effects, but I'll tell you lately I've had a lot of people in my office who've been suffering from side effects related to huge doses of vitamin D taken over ridiculous periods of time. They never should have been put on any vitamin D in my opinion, but um, uh, it, at the very least it should have been discontinued a long time before they showed up here at the wellness forum. So um, another just say no, no to vitamin D supplementation, no to resveratrol supplementation. When you go in the health food store, Store. stay away from that section of the store and if you patronize practitioners who push this stuff you're probably going to the wrong types of practitioners all right well that's it for this week have a great week and weekend and I will be back to you next week